بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد ما بعد سستز we look at another um, way in which people commit shirk we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to save us from all forms of shirk and to keep us on the pure path Surat al-Mustaqeem the path of Tawheed and this second form of shirk I spoke to you about Riya which is secret shirk I spoke to you about one of the forms of open shirk which is to join partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another one is uh, shirk by association now beliefs which fall under this are where there is uh, there is a belief in a main God or a supreme being over creation but his dominion, his control, his rububiyat is shared by uh, other uh, gods and spirits and uh, human beings and maybe uh, heavenly bodies and uh, you know earthly things uh, and also in this are uh, systems uh, and and uh, and belief systems like Vastu and Feng Shui uh, and all that, right? So good times, bad times, Rahu Kalam, Ketu Kalam, uh, all of these, which are superstitions, good omens, bad omens, uh, cat cross the black cat cross the street, uh, and so on and so forth. All such beliefs constitute shirk. And uh, even though a person who uh, has these beliefs <coughs> may, believe, may, may claim to be Muslim, may claim to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, they are contaminating their Islam with these beliefs and depending on what they believe, it can completely negate their Islam and take them out of Islam. Now in Islam, all of these kinds of beliefs and systems are different forms of polytheism these are different forms of shirk these are these are different forms of idolatry and therefore they are um, degeneration of the uh, the the divinely uh, inspired belief system which is islam so no matter in what time islam came islam came with only one uh, belief which was <coughs> Tawheed uh, La ilaha illallah uh, There is no one worthy of, of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This is the uh, meaning of Islam and this is what Islam came with And anyone who is moving away from that is moving away from Islam Another a uh, form of uh, shirk is shirk by negating, by negation. And uh, these are of course uh, all forms of atheism, uh, things that deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one way or the other. So atheism for example denies the existence of Allah itself. Uh, atheists believe that there is no creator, there is no God and uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to go into uh, the details of atheism because that's not my purpose here. We are talking about Tawheed. Uh, but all atheistic uh, beliefs are, are not Islam. They are, contrary, they are contrary to Islam and these are all different forms of shirk because a person is uh, introducing his belief in the place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Agnosticism also is... Uh, a form of shirk uh, because it acknowledges the existence of something but not Allah right I had a I can't call it a conversation because I never got a response but uh, one of my very very dear and old friends uh, has this habit of uh, saying uh, but the universe did this and the universe did that and I am very grateful to the universe so I asked I said uh, you are grateful to the universe meaning what? You are grateful to, to Saturn and uh, the Sun and to Mercury uh, and to Jupiter or are you, are you grateful to 
the supernova or are you grateful to uh, just black space or what do you mean universe right uh, you are grateful to the universe means what i say are you really saying that these planets uh, and all the other stars and planets all that there are there in the world and which we don't we don't know uh, these are all uh, interested in your life and that they are doing something for you are you saying that they created you what is this universe i said i believe in allah the one creator who created all of those and me and i never got a response from that after that anyway so that's uh, that is uh, agnosticism uh, which claims that yeah, there is a god yeah there is a super being but he is not really interested in um, in his creation right so uh, we are on our own and then of course the pantheism which is uh, the which is the view that the universe and nature and uh, Uh, and 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 uh, god that is allah subhanahu wa taala uh, are identical this is what i meant when i went when i mentioned the example of my friend that is uh, pantheism uh, so all of these are shirkia philosophies and these are not islam uh, i mentioned already and i'm saying it again because this is so uh, ingrained and may allah protect us uh, especially among the indian muslims uh, belief in astrology or vastu or lucky stones and lucky stones Uh, wearing uh, aqeeq or this or that or wearing a sapphire is uh, lucky or unlucky and uh, lucky days and unlucky days uh, tuesday is a bad day friday is a good day friday is a good day not because it is lucky friday is a good day because allah subhanahu wa taala gave friday a particular space a particular place just like allah subhanahu wa taala gave ramadan a particular place muharram a particular place uh, allah subhanahu wa taala gave uh, you know different uh, days and and months and this bin allah taala but there is no good luck and bad luck associated with it uh, so similarly uh, lucky and unlucky omens uh, this happened that happened cat crossed the road and all that sort of stuff uh, belief in lucky charms right these tabizas which people write and they make a living out of it they are protect us is the quran for this purpose that you write on a piece of paper and stitch it in a piece of cloth and hang it around somebody's neck and they go to the toilet and the bathroom with that is that what the quran is meant for and then of course they have these you know, they write these uh, you know they they make us uh, they draw a a square and they uh, like a table and, and and they cross it and they put uh, huruful muqattaat in that so there is ha mi mayn sin qaf and so on so on all huruful muqattaat and they put some numbers and what not all of these are shirk these are open shirk if you are wearing one of those take it away throw it away right take it out and throw it away if it has quran written on it bury it somewhere if it if it has all this garbage written on it junk it throw it in the garbage and make istighfar and tauba and ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from this there is nobody who can harm or or help except allah la nafi wa la dharra illa allah and whoever is uh, you know if if you have these friends who are making a living out of uh, selling this uh, stuff tell them to get honest before they meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Similarly, all of this uh, numerology, tarot cards, uh, feng shui, uh, vastu, rahu kalam, ketu kalam, uh, you know, putting a horseshoe somewhere, uh, rabbit's foot, touch wood, all of these are shirk and they negate your Islam. If you believe it and do it, you have left Islam. If you do it without believing some vague sort of feeling, then you are an ignorant person. And please, there is nothing nice about being ignorant. Um, similarly believing that anyone uh living or dead can harm or benefit is shirk anyone living or except allah subhanahu wa taala that anyone can harm or or benefit for example you go to a doctor and you say the doctor cured me this is shirk allah subhanahu wa taala cured you and the doctor was the reason many times people talk about cars right they say oh this is absolutely safe car fantastic very very safe and uh you know mercedes lovers yeah, they oh mercedes is absolutely safe car and nothing will happen to you in an accident then ask them what happened to uh, lady die lady die died in a mercedes in an armored mercedes sitting in the back rear seat with her seat belt on how come she and her boyfriend both died life and death in the hands of allah subhanahu wa taala it is not in mercedes it is not in a so called safe car it is not in a seat belt it is not in a mask you are wearing for covid you do this because these are asbab 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to use the asbab. But we do not have faith in the asbab. We do not have belief that this thing is helping me or harming me or can help me or harm me. Uh, this thing is beneficial or not beneficial. If I have that, if I am wearing a mask, thinking that it will save me from COVID, then I am committing shirk. If I am wearing a seat belt, thinking that it will save me from uh, death or, uh, or, or serious injury, then I am committing shirk. Please, by all means, wear a seat belt. Right? First of all, it is a law. Or you get a ticket. So wear it. There is nothing nice in breaking the law. We don't, we don't advise anybody to break the law. And secondly, it is a safety measure. And Islam does not prevent us from taking safety measures. We are talking about the belief in the heart. And therefore also please understand that building according to vastu is major shirk. And to believe that if you are in the building business, to believe that, oh, unless I build according to vastu, nobody will buy these flats is major shirk. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives you risk. If you really have problem with these things, get out of the building business. Believe me, my brothers and sisters, you don't need Jahannam. Death is inevitable. Jahannam is not inevitable. We will all die, but we will all not go to Jahannam unless we make plans for that. Unless we want to go to Jahannam. So let us not do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned this beautiful hadith which we hear in, uh, you know, uh, most Jumas, where Rasulullah sallallahu said, مَنْ يَهْدِي اللَّهُ مَنْ يَهْدِي اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ وَمَنْ يُدْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ إِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهُ وَأَحْسَنَ الْحَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدَعْ وَكُلَّ بِدَعْتٍ ضَلَالَ وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said which means أو كما قال عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم He said all bid'a is evil and all bid'a is in the fire What is bid'a? We'll look at that as part of the Aqidah lecture We'll come to that But bid'a is to create any innovation is to do in ibadah something that Rasulullah did not do and he did not preach and there's no difference between the two whatever he preached he did so what anything that in ibadah among among the acts of worship people people get confused oh he never uh, wore uh, trousers and and and, and shirts and he, it's nothing to do with that we don't wear a trouser and shirt for ibadah we're talking about ibadah for worship any act of worship any act of worship is an act of worship is something that you do we, as an act of worship to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with expectation of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that act of worship is not in keeping with the sunnah of Rabbi sallam, if it is not something that he did, then this act, then that becomes a bidah, that becomes shirk. And therefore there is no such thing as a bidah hasana. Bidah hasana in a linguistic sense, yes, which is a something good which is new. That's a different thing. We are not talking about linguistic sense. We are talking about the technical meaning of the word bida in Islamic theology. And in that context, there is no such thing as a bida hasana. Now, dying on shirk is jahannam. There is no doubt about this. This is our aqidah. And please don't hesitate about this. Please don't become apologetic about it. This is the reality. Right? If you are telling, if you are preaching Islam, if you are talking about Islam to somebody preaching, doesn't mean you have to be a khatib or an imam standing on a member. When you are telling somebody about Islam, do it clearly, do it without any uh, doubts in it. Because if you have doubts and if you communicate doubts and if you say something like, oh, but you know, as long as you are doing good, it's okay. As long as you believe in God, it's okay. When that person faces Jahannam, that person will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you. Because you did not make it clear to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah ya... I mentioned this ayat before, I'm saying it again. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha wa man yushrik billahi faqad iftara ithman azima Verily Allah does not forgive that partner should be set up with him 
but he forgives everything else except that to whom he wills and whoever sets up partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has indeed invented a tremendous sin we come to the second part of uh, second uh, aspect of shirk which is shirk fi asma wa sifati Allah ta'ala shirk idolatry polytheism joining partners in the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes now it's a very uh, important thing to understand that the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, some of these are personal names like Allah and Ar-Rahman others are names which describe his attributes his sifat like Ar-Razzaq Ar-Rahman, I mean uh, Ar-Razzaq, uh, Al-Wadud, Al-Ghaffar and so on. These are what we call Tawqifi. These are names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Rasulullah sallam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught and mentioned them in the Quran. Some of them in the Quran. Some of them we know from what Rasulullah sallam told us. Uh, these are not names in a linguistic sense. These are not names that people can invent. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Lillahi l-asma al-husna fadurhu biha All the good names are for Allah and you in, and call upon Allah, invoke Allah by those names. By good names, it does not mean any name that you invent which you think is good. It means that all the names of Allah which Allah told us are good and therefore call Allah by those names. Right, there's a big difference between the two things. Lillahi al-Asma'ul Husna for Allah are the good names. Now, this good name does not mean some name I invent, or you invent, or somebody else invents. By good names, it means those names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned to us are good, and Allah said, "Call Allah by those names." Now. Sometimes people in their ignorance uh, they say that Allah, the word for creator in English is creator, uh, in uh, uh, you know, in, in Hinduism, uh, Brahma uh, is supposed to be a creator, and uh, in uh, Arabic we say Al Khaliq. Now this is complete ignorance because as I said Al Khaliq is a specific theological term and name which refers only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is particularized, it has the Al before it, the creator and there is no such thing as the creator and instead of uh, saying Al Khaliq uh, we can say Brahma or we can say whatever this is a this this kind of a statement is a statement of shirk it's a statement of complete and total ignorance about the uh, names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his sifat um, there is a huge big difference between you know generic meanings or linguistic meanings uh, which are uh, you know of, of anything and the actual name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't play games with the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that would be open shirk. Another um, form of uh, shirk in terms of uh, asma wa sifat is what is called tashbih wa tajseem. Tashbih wa tajseem. Anthropomorphism and anthropotheism. Right? Uh, anthropomorphism is uh, uh, ascribing the uh, qualities of uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to uh, human beings and anthropotheism is to ascribe human qualities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Greek uh, philosopher uh, Xenophanes who lived in uh, between 570 and 480 BC he said the greatest God 
resembles man neither in form nor in mind. Yeah, this is, is somebody who lived uh, 2500 years uh, before today. Now, anthropomorphism of God is rejected by Judaism and Islam, which both believe that God is beyond human limits of physical comprehension. So this is a common belief between uh, us and the Jews, and there are lots of common beliefs between us and the Jews. Uh, so both of these, anthropomorphism and anthropotheism, are, uh, are forms of shirk. We do not, for example, believe that, uh, and this is where the human, human qualities are uh, ascribed to uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, and the most most uh, famous of them uh, is that uh, God created this world uh, in uh, six days and on the seventh day he rested because he was tired inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun astaghfirullahi ladheem na'udhu billahi min dhalik this is shirk open shirk because we are uh, the people who believe that are ascribing the human quality of uh, getting tired to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to create, He says, kun, He says, be, and it is. Allah does not get tired creating something. So He does not re- need rest like like we do. La ta khuduhu sinatu wala no. He needs neither sleep, nor does He, uh, you know, he, he, neither is He drowsy, nor does He nod off to sleep, or neither does he need rest and neither does he get tired and so on. All of these ascribing human qualities to Allah and ascribing Allah's qualities to humans. And this is what happens when you go to graves and we ask the so the person in the grave you know, to do this or that for us or to uh, make dua for us. You are ascribing to that person the quality of knowing who you are and understanding your language even though they never knew you when they were alive and they did not speak your language when they were alive and you believe that they can do both. These are qualities on which belong only to Allah. Only Allah knows who you are because He created you and only Allah can understand every language because He created languages. To ascribe this to a human being is open shirk. To ascribe human qualities to Allah is also open shirk. And all of these are in the category of shirk, fi, asma wa sifat. You don't need to remember all this uh, technical terminology or technical words that I'm using is very basic technical words. This is not great, uh, you know, uh, peak of ilm or something that I'm sharing with you. These are fundamental things. Unfortunately, we don't teach this in our homes, and that is why it seems like a great thing. Uh, but these are basic fundamental things which we should know. So it doesn't matter if you don't remember the uh, the the, uh, the Arabic words or the uh, even the English words. Just don't do it. Do not. Compare Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not resemble Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to anything in creation and do not resemble anything in creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He said about Himself, Laisa kamithlihi shayun. He said He is unlike any creation. He is unlike anything in creation. He is unlike, he is unlike any created being. God was not created in the form of man. Man was not created in the form of God. Man is man, God is God. God is the creator of man. And there is no resemblance between the two. Now, shirk by humanism, again, this is a major shirk uh, which places one outside Islam. For example, uh, Hindus, Buddhists, and uh, before that, uh, the Romans and the Greeks, and then the Egyptians, ancient Egyptians, they all worshipped countless idols, very interestingly, in the form of their race. Greek idols look like Greeks, Roman idols look like Romans, Roman gods look like Romans, Greek gods look like Greeks, the old British gods, the Celtic gods, they look like the Celts, Hindu and Buddhist gods look like Indian men and women. You should ask this question, how come there is no uh, white uh, Hindu god or or a black African Hindu god, right? They are all Indian men and women. and then the concept of avatar. Avatar is God came to the earth in the form, in, a, in human form. And this is not even restricted to Hindus. The Hindus, of course, has, has plenty of them, but it's not restricted to Hinduism. Even the Christians believe it. And there's a, there are, there's a sect of Christianity and a large part of them who believe that Jesus is God. Jesus, uh, and the name Jesus also. I mean, Isa Salam is his real name. Jesus is what they made it. 
so we say Jesus is God on earth. God descended to the earth in human form and that is Jesus. The Aga Khan is believe this about Aga Khan. They believe the Aga Khan is the avatar, is the is the uh, mazhar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naudhu billahi min dhalik, may Allah protect us from all of this. All of these are false claims. There is no truth in any of this. And these amount to shirk, these amount to polytheism. As far as, uh, uh, as Muslims, we do not believe in any of this. Whoever believes in it, most welcome, please go ahead, do what you want. We are not uh, trying to force you to change anything. We are just stating to you what the reality is, what the fact is, according to Islam. Now, modern day, as I said, uh, the uh, practice of um, Catholics, of course, have gone to the old practice of idolatry, where they worship statues of uh, Jesus and Mary, uh, which they themselves admit that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus prohibited them prohibited this but they still do it just as the bible very clearly prohibits isa alayhi salam never ate pork and the, and the bible prohibits eating of pork but the christians eat pork anyway that's that's them uh, that is up to them to do what they want as far as we are concerned we do not do it anyone who does that anyone who believes in an avatar anyone who believes that god came to earth in human form has committed major shirk and if that person is a muslim who believes that that person has exited islam then shirk by deification, uh, where created things are given or claim to have Allah's names or uh, attributes. Among the Shia sects, uh, the Nusairiya of Syria, they believe that Ali bin Abi Talib anhu, was a mazhar of Allah, Nauz Billah, that he was a uh, incarnation of Allah, Nauz Billah. I mentioned to you already that the Ismailis, uh, men, uh, believe that Aga Khan is God incarnate, that he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth, Naud Billah. Um, uh, claims by Sufis or so called Sufis, because the actual Sufis were people who were uh, Muwahideen, they were on Tawheed, uh, but so called Sufis, Al Hallaj, uh, Sufi Sarbast, and so forth, uh, who claimed Wahdatul Wujud the unity of existence that there is only one existence and that is God and therefore God is Hulul, they call it Hulul, that is God by His Zat, by His Self is present in every created thing. This is open and major shirk. If you believe that you have exited Islam. Uh, people like Halaj and Sufi uh, Sarbast, uh, they uh, claim, they said uh, al Haq, they said I am God, I am Allah. And when you ask them, how, how can you say that? They say, no, I, I am not, I don't exist at this moment. It is Allah speaking. So when he's saying, I am Allah, he is not there. It is Allah who is there. But when you will see him, he is sitting there. But he said, no, this is not me. This is God. All of these are shirk and kufr and, and irtadab. They are, they, they, you become murtad. You are out of Islam if you have this belief. So if you do believe any of this, please immediately make istighfar and tawbah. May Allah forgive, forgive and protect you. Uh, and protect all of us from these completely and totally false claims. Uh, similarly, giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributes of His creatures, uh, as I mentioned to you uh, in the Bible and the Torah, the Greeks and the, yeah, not the Greeks, the Christians and the Jews, they believe that God uh, took rest uh, on the seventh day, and depending on where you count it from, there is, uh, uh, they have, you know, Sab Sab Sabbath on. Saturday or Sunday, uh, having a special day for worship, special day of the week, this is fine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for us Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us uh, Friday, which is a special day of worship. But we don't worship Allah on Friday because He took He took rest on Friday. Yeah? Friday is a holiday for Allah, no. So all of these, uh, these claims which attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, things that belong to His makhluk, to the creatures, all of these are major shirk and they negate Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is incomparable. As I mentioned to you, Laysa kamisli shayun wa huwa samiul basir. In Surah al Shura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, There is nothing like him and he is the hearer and seer of everything. Allah does not resemble and is unlike his creation in any way whatsoever. Similarly, man must not be human beings, must not be given. Uh, attributes which uh, resemble Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Inshallah, this we will do in our next lesson. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to understand the essentials of Tawheed and to live our lives by it. As I mentioned to you, uh, this is so, so important because it is not just a matter of life and death. It's a matter of life in the hereafter in which there is no death. So if that is good, Alhamdulillah, we are good. But if that is bad, then we are toast. Let us not do that.